The following lesson is a presentation of PrepLogic's Learn Smart video training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart video training library, call 1-800-418-6789. If we're going to effectively administer a virtual infrastructure or a virtual environment, we do need to begin by understanding what virtualization really is and what it's not, the different ways that it can be implemented, and the differences between those implementation methods. So we need to understand the different things that can impact the performance we get out of virtualization, and of course just the basic way that virtualization functions. So you could define virtualization as the process which allows multiple operating system instances to run concurrently on a single computer. And this is a big thing. This is a huge difference from dual booting, for example, where you boot into one operating system and then you want the other one. Well, you've got to reboot into the other operating system. In this case, the operating systems are running concurrently at the same time on the same computer. This is done by virtualizing the hardware. Now, we can implement this with bare metal or within a host. When we say we're implementing it with bare metal, this means that the virtualization layer is running right on the hardware, and then our virtual machines run on top of that. When we say we're running virtualization within a host, it means that we run an operating system like Windows or Linux, and then on top of that operating system, we run a virtualization layer, and then on top of that virtualization layer, we actually run our virtual machines. So that's very different. Now, when we implement virtualization, whether bare metal or host, the hardware is virtualized for the guest operating system. Now, organizations like VMware don't like for us to use the word emulate. They prefer for us to say virtualized, and there's a very good reason for that. Many times when we use the word emulation, we think more of emulating software or emulating a particular application or possibly just emulating an operating system. Here what we're doing is actually virtualizing an entire hardware base. We have virtual hard drives, virtual network cards, virtual processors, virtual memory. Everything is virtualized for the virtual machines. And so, indeed, we're not really just emulating a software program, we're virtualizing the entire system. Realize that one of the benefits of virtualization is that operating system instances are isolated. This means that they run in their own assigned separate memory spaces, and that does help us with stability in a virtualized environment. One of the big concerns that many people have about running a virtualized environment is that they will have stability issues since they're after all running so many different things on one server. You may have one physical server with say four processors and on there you may run six or seven virtual machines. Now the issue of concern then is in the past, wow, just running multiple services on one operating system could make that server unstable. Now all of a sudden we're going to run four, five, six, seven virtual machines on one piece of hardware and expect it to be stable? Well, there's a big difference. In the previous method, what we did was we used services on a single operating system base. And if that operating system locked up, of course the whole server was locked up. Now each virtual machine runs its own operating system in the virtual machine and of course the services. The virtualization layer is actually able then to shut down one virtual machine while operating all of the rest. So the stability concern that is similar to running multiple services is really not a well-founded concern and we don't have to worry about it as much. We do want to choose a virtualization vendor, however, that gives us a stable hypervisor or virtualization layer so that we do have that enterprise class stability. One of the key things we need to understand about virtualization then is this concept of a hypervisor. The hypervisor is the most efficient way to run virtual machines. We actually have three different ways though. The first method is what is called a type 2 virtual machine manager. In this case what we have is we have our hardware, we have the operating system, and then on top of that we run the VMM, the virtual machine manager. 
A couple of examples of that would be the Java Virtual Machine and the .NET CLR. These virtual machines allow the launching of those types of applications. So type 2 virtual machine managers are usually application level virtualization. Now the next thing we have is what's called a hybrid virtual machine manager. In this case, what we do is we have the hardware and we have a host operating system and alongside of that host operating system, the virtual machine manager runs. In some ways, it must communicate through the host operating system to get to the hardware, and in other ways, it can communicate directly with the hardware. Then your guest virtual machines run in that virtual machine manager on top of the host OS and the hardware. Examples here include virtual PC from Microsoft, VMware Workstation from VMware. Both of these would be examples of hybrid virtual machine managers. Now finally we have the type 1 virtual machine manager. This is the ideal implementation. Looking at this graphic we can see the difference here. Notice that we have our hardware and then we have the virtual machine manager. That's it. Notice the host OS is gone. This means that the virtualization layer, which is called the hypervisor in this case, is running directly on the hardware. And then our guest operating systems run on top of that. It gives us better performance and it gives us better stability. Examples include VMware ESX and ESXi and Hyper-V. Both of these are actually hypervisor virtual machines. Now that we understand some of the basics of how virtualization would be implemented, let's look at the benefits of virtualization. The first benefit is simplified disaster recovery. When we virtualize our servers, we have the ability to bring that virtual server up on different hardware very, very quickly. So we remove the hardware failure component from this issue. Normally, if hardware fails, we've got to get new hardware, we've got to reload that new hardware, restore our backups in order to get back up and running. With virtualization and different technologies, we're actually able to move virtual machines from one piece of hardware, one virtual server, to another. For example, VMware provides something called vMotion. And vMotion actually allows us to move a virtual machine live from one host to another host, literally from one physical server to another physical server. We also have storage vMotion where we can move virtual machines from one storage area network to another storage area network. So we have this benefit of simplified disaster recovery. We also have simplified maintenance. Because these are virtual machines, we're dealing with, if we want to back it up, we just back up the entire virtual machine file and virtual machine configuration file and we're done. So we have simplified maintenance there. We also have simplified maintenance through the fact that we're able to administer multiple servers on one physical box. We have reduced hardware costs because we're more efficiently using our hardware and we have reduced management costs because more servers can be managed by fewer administrators. Now one of the greatest benefits is that we have simplified support for older operating systems and applications. This means that we can support operating systems that may have been released five, seven, even ten years ago so that we can use those applications and we don't have to worry about upgrading to new operating systems and new hardware. So there are a number of benefits to virtualization, but think about it. Think about how many times you've had an application that you needed to run, but you really don't have the operating system anymore that that application was on. I ran into that about six or seven months ago where I was wanting to run an application that actually was designed for Windows 3.1. Yeah, that's right, that old. And in order to run that application, I needed to actually build a Windows 3.1 machine because, believe it or not, the application would not work on any of the modern versions of Windows today. Well, guess what? I was actually able to get a DOS and Windows 3.1 virtual machine up and running. In that case, I was running it on Virtual PC 2007, but you could do the same thing with VMware Workstation or even open source virtualization tools. The point is, by getting that virtual machine up and running, I was able to work with that older application, get what I needed out of it, and then if